Hi again all, it's AC Dodd and welcome back to part two of uh, modifying this 1275 cylinder head. Use the auto feed and just cut down on that. No problem at all. Okay, so we've uh, machined out that uh, valve seat. As you can see, we've pocketed it down, um, and we've now got a new depth for 349, so I was aiming for 350. That one's 348, that one's 349, that one's 351. So uh, that's just the exhaust done now. So we've opened it up to the side, we've opened it up to the depth. As you can see, it's also thinned out the seat, and that's perfect because uh, we'll be able to cut the new seat and uh, up to the right width again and then what I've now got to do is go through and cut the uh, inlets down to match here we are cutting out the inlets and that cuts them down to the same level as the exhausts. While the head's still on the machine, I'll also take the opportunity to open out the valve seats uh, on the inlets, ready for the larger inlet valves. We started off with a 33.2 inlet, and we're gonna go up to the 35.7. So uh, here I've already started cutting, and I'm gonna uh, basically rough these out so they're not accurate they're just taking uh, i'm just taking out the uh, majority of the meat so that when i do the final seat cutting i don't have to take out very large cuts okay in that operation there you can see on that valve seat um you've got three angles below or you've got two angles below the seat so that's currently a three angle seat um, so that seat's not accurate and I'm going to change the guide so it's got to be recut again. But the reason why I've done that is it's, uh, it roughs out and gets the material out of the way um, and makes it easier for the final valve seat cutting operation um, at the end of all the modifications. So uh, it also allows me to uh, blend the chamber in properly around that uh, uh, basically guide seat so I can uh, you know, shake the chamber around the, the valve etc. Anyway. They're all done now, so the next job is to remove this from the milling machine and uh, push the guides out. And then we are ready for the next stage. Rather than using a hammer and a punch to drive out the guides, I use my hydraulic press. 
just pushing the guides out. Use my hydraulic press. Saves damaging the guides and just gently pushes them out. That's that one. And we will repeat that for all the guides. Now we'll do some thread chasing. First up, it's the thermostat housing threads with a 5 16th UNC tap. For the exhaust manifold stud thread holes, it's a 5 16th UNF tap. Although not used on this particular head, the heater tap stud holes are tapped out quarter inch UNF. And finally, on the MPI, the alternator bracket mounts are metric. So in this case, M8 by 1.25 pitch. Okay, so we're over on the milling machine now, and I'm set up to uh, machine the valve spring heights. Uh, as you can see there, I've already done three, uh, and I've got the, uh, the rest of the five to uh, do there. The idea of this is just to um, bring them all to the same uh, depth, just to make... Uh, it much nicer uh, and easier to uh, to set everything up when it's uh, when it's all done. This modification is best done when um, the other side of the head, all the valve uh, seat heights are all set the same. And obviously, uh, it only really works when all the valves uh, are matched and they're all at the same uh, installed length as well. So. Uh, that and the spring retainers um, and the final position of those all. Um, need to be taken into account so just because you do this doesn't mean to say everything's going to be right you still need to shim but it's nice to have everything nice and even to start with because uh, it, it it's it's just the right thing to do really let's just watch as i machine a few of these spring seats You'll notice as the uh, cutter comes down, um, because it's such a wide contact on this spot facing tool, uh, it puts a lot of tool pressure on. So you'll see that actually as it makes contact just about now, you'll see the actual uh, chuck swaying slightly. And that's because this is an extreme cutting uh, pressure which is uh, loading the machine to its maximum. Because there's such a wide contact area with this uh, cutting tool into the workpiece, um, a slow spindle speed is used to avoid uh, chatter and vibration. Of course, all I'm doing here is machining each seat down to the same depth. We've got that lock machine. Let's have a measure. In 
this case, I'm not going for any particular depth. I'm just going so they're all approximately the same. They're all, all within about a thousandth of an inch. Which is excellent. One of the other things to remember when you're doing these is uh, always make sure there's a nice radius in the corner. As you can see uh, where that's been machined, I've got a nice, nice generous uh, tall radius in the corner. That's to uh, make sure we don't generate any stress raises and uh, reduce the chance of any cracking. Oh, here we've got the cylinder head set up. Uh, well, almost set up. It's in the milling machine, but we've got to uh, make sure the manifold face is flat so we can machine it. So, uh, as you can see here, just putting the head in the vise uh, doesn't guarantee it's flat, so we have to make it flat. Okay, a uh, couple of taps with a hammer. And you can see that that is much better and ready for refacing. As you can see the uh, face mill I'm using here is ideal for this machine operation, it feeds quick and makes a nice job. Okay that's all done. Looking nice, uh, so after that's been cut we just need to uh, take a file around, take the sharp edges off uh, around all the ports and then chamfer the threads. That face is done. So here we are, we've got the cylinder head uh, up on the milling machine and we're now going to skim the top face to make it nice and flat. And get rid of that horrible original factory machining. On the first pass we can see it's not quite cleaned up all the way across um, so we can see that the original surface of this cylinder head wasn't quite flat uh, and, and, and complete with this end it's not even touched at all so yes it's touched most of it but just not this corner and maybe this little bit here the rest of it it has so uh, yeah interesting shape and obviously just missed the corner there so not quite flat anyway we're going to keep machining and to get that nice nice and flat. I've been asked a question or two about my fly cutter, so I just thought while this is up on the machine, I'll just tell you what it is. Uh, it's basically mild steel, uh, and it's got a uh, left-handed um, lathe tool uh, bolted to it, which I purchased, uh, and I use um, TNMG inserts, and I use it in a negative fashion because obviously uh, it gives me more strength. Uh, and you need an insert with a sharp edge. So in this case, I use a TNMG 220408, and this is uh, suitable for aluminium. Final finish going on. And then we're on to the next stage, which is put some guides in it. And then we can start cutting the chambers. Okay, top face all skimmed, she's looking lovely. Next job, it's valve guides. Okay, that's it for part two. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed that. Um, and as ever, please like and subscribe and uh, stay tuned for part three.